what are the chances of Gilas of making it out of Group A? We do go against the Dominica Dominican Republic first tomorrow, Angola Sunday, and Italy on Tuesday. And do you think Italy will really take the win from our group? Okay, let's set the perspective. We're not going to talk win or lose here for the Philippines because we've already won. We're staging the FIBA World Cup, and that's victory in itself. And the fact that we've rolled out the red carpet for all these visiting teams for the FIBA hierarchy to enjoy our hospitality, that's already a victory. For us to play in the World Cup, that's also a victory. So the guys who didn't make the Gilas lineup, they feel... Well, you know, they're disappointed. They weren't able to make the lineup. But they were part of the 16 of the millions of players who would have wanted to even be in the final 16. So I think forget about losing. This is about winning. And as far as the bottom line of the game is concerned, and that's what you're asking about. Well, okay, let's, let's, let's talk brass tacks. Um, for the Dominican Republic, they have two NBA players. Carl Anthony Towns is seven foot tall. He's our legitimate NBA player who's earned over $150 million in his uh, NBA career. We're up against a very tough opposition, and uh, they've got a good balance of big guys and small guys, but we know how the Dominican Republic plays. We've played them before, we've lost to them before, but I think we're ready. I think Gilas is ready to answer the question of whether we can make it to the next round. I feel the safe number of wins is two. We beat Angola, we beat the Dominican Republic, we're in the next round. If we win only one, there's a possibility there could be a three-way tie for second place, in which case, quotients will come into play. If whatever game we win, we need to win big to be able to make sure we have a good quotient if in case there's going to be a triple tie for second place. And I say that because I'm assuming Italy is going to sweep our group. Italy, I feel, is a contender for a podium finish. That's how strong they are. Kinito... A lot of people are saying that this is the best lineup that Gilas has ever created. Do you agree with that? Have you seen this team in the tune-up games um, with the Mexico and Ivory Coast? And how are we talent-wise with the final 12? Well, talent-wise, I think we're good. I think we could even be better, especially if Brownlee uh, was playing as a naturalized player. And Jordan Clarkson is recognized as a local. Now, that would be a very competitive team. But, of course, that's wishful thinking. That's something maybe can be, can, that be can, can considered in some future FIBA World Cup. But at the moment, yes, in answer to your question, we've got 12 very talented, very committed players who are out to win. They're not in there just to compete. They're out there to win. And the big reason is because, well, they're doing it for the home crowd. And that's going to be a major six-man for us. Um, I think in... In terms of giving us an energy boost, an adrenaline pump, I think the, the six man, that big crowd, is going to be in there for us. And that will play a major role in deciding whether we win or lose games. Talent is one thing, though, Kinito, but chemistry is also important. Are you liking the chemistry of this final 12? I mean, you know, you've watched the tune-up games. Are they going to be able to play as a tight unit on the floor, do you think? I think so. Uh, Coach Chotreyes made a decision of the 12 players, not on the basis of personalities. Walang personalan. What he made a decision was on the basis of positions he needed to get better. He needed to get stronger. So he looked at where we needed depth. And in the point guard position, for instance, Kiefer Ravenna made it because he plays point guard. He's a pure point guard. And you need someone who can relieve Scotty Thompson because we're not really sure how many minutes Scotty can play. He's coming off a hand injury. So we need to have an insurance at the point guard position. Then you have Jordan Clarkson, who can also play the point guard position. That was a major consideration and who to choose in the final 12. But again, talking about chemistry, I saw chemistry, but I also saw some lessons that were learned by the Philippines in those three tune-up games, particularly against Montenegro, because we only took 15 three-point shots in that game when we averaged about 25. There's a reason for that. Montenegro is an international team that knows the FIBA style. And right now, the three-point shot is the major weapon for all these teams playing in the FIBA World Cup. What they did to Gilas in that tune-up game against Montenegro was they took away our three-point shots. They didn't give us good looks. They met us early. They made sure they were switching and that we could not take those decent shots from three-point distance. They gave us shots from the inside. 
but those are two points. Julmar Fajardo got away with 19 points, but we only shot five three-pointers. While on the other hand, Montenegro was shooting a lot of three-pointers. Two points against three points, you do the math. Montenegro had the edge towards the end. Guinito, that was, you're absolutely right. I think that game with Montenegro, the tune-up game, was ab absolutely interesting. Um, we actually were on top by the end of the first quarter, but by the fourth quarter, Montenegro was leading by 20 points, come back, right? So it feels like it's a confidence thing. What do you think the team can do when they hit that wall again? Well, I think that was a lesson learned. I think it was great. The idea of Coach Jotre is to do these tune-ups. He made sure that we would play against a European team so that we could get used to that kind of style uh, since we're playing Italy. And then he made sure that we played against Ivory Coast, which plays the African style since we're playing Angola. And then Mexico which is, uh, you know, the Latin American sort of uh, um, vibe that he needed against uh, to, to prepare for the Dominican Republic. So I thought the lineup of tune-up games that uh, we put together was perfect, perfect. And I think our coaching staff knows exactly what they're doing. Now, talking about the Dominican Republic in tomorrow's game, I don't know if it's still a secret, but the assistant coach, Tim Cohn, flew all the way to Granada, Spain, over the weekend to watch the Dominican Republic play against Canada and Spain oh. in two games. So we had a scout right in the stands, watching live, taking down notes. And when Coach Tim came back last Monday, he had a ton of things to share with the team. They've been viewing, they've been looking at tendencies of the Dominican players. I think our team is ready. We're ready to win. We're hoping that we win. Uh, of course, if we lose, at least we tried our best, right? But again, I've predicated my, uh, my analysis in saying that this already was a victory for the Philippines because we're staging the FIBA World Cup after over 45 years since we last staged it. Well, right, Kenito, Kenito, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to ask you, you talked about, of course, Jordan Clarkson, a little bit about Kiefer Ravenna, but we do have, I think, around five non-professionals uh, in this 12-man pool. What can you tell us about them? What can we expect from them? And who do you think is going to shine? Okay, I, I'm looking at guys who can play multiple positions. Dwight Ramos has never played uh, professional ball in the Philippines, but he's playing as a professional in Japan. Ren Zabando, same thing, never played in the PBA, but has played in Korea. And we've got other players who can contribute big time. AJ Edu, for instance, I think he was a revelation. I, was, uh, I went over to, the, to Inspire Academy when the team was in camp, and I saw one practice of theirs, and at that point, A.J. Edu had a sprained ankle, he couldn't play. But you could see the determination in his eyes. Every time there was a break where he could do some shooting without having to strain his ankle further, I thought, uh, I thought there was great commitment that he was showing. And A.J. Edu, I feel, is a diamond in the rough. I think he can shine in this competition. If he, still, if he stays healthy enough, I think he will shine. Another guy who I'm expecting to really glow yeah, is Scotty Thompson. Um, the conviction that he had in his heart to come back from a fractured right hand and the quick recovery that he did, um, he came back a week before he was supposed to even be cleared to play. And during the tune-ups, he played wonderfully. I mean, this is the guy who makes things happen for the Philippines. And then you've got Jordan Clarkson. He's a given. He'll give us at least 20 points a game. And remember against Mexico, we lost by seven. Jordan Clarkson didn't play. I'm of the opinion that if Jordan Clarkson played that game, we would have wiped uh, Mexico out. That's really my, my conviction. Jordan Clarkson means a lot. And the players are now beginning to understand what it takes to support him, to make it easier for Jordan Clarkson to carry us on his shoulders and make us win. So that kind of mindset, that kind of conviction and commitment, uh, that's what we're going to be seeing from the Philippine team in the FIBA okay, World Nito, Cup. How about Kai Soto? He's coming in here with a back injury. How do you expect him to perform? Well, in the tune-ups, I saw that he wasn't really running 100%. He was, sad to say, jogging a little bit. But, you know, I think uh, his head is in place. He knows what has to be done. I saw some uh, sparks of brilliance from Kai Soto, especially against the Ivory Coast when he scored 10 points. Um, I thought he played the pick and roll beautifully. I also thought that uh, he passed very well for a big guy. This guy's a good passer, um, and he's a very underrated passer. Now, if he can just make sure that he protects the rim, he doesn't need to score. He just needs to be an intimidating factor inside. Carl Anthony Towns of the Dominican Republic is going to get his shots from the outside. He's not a post player. So 
Um, I'm remembering that in the 1974 FIBA World Cup, and that was played in Puerto Rico, the Philippines upset Australia 101 to 100. That's Australia. They had a superstar named Eddie Palubinskas who scored 39 points against the Philippines. Philippines won that game. So I'm thinking if we do exactly the same thing, let Carl Anthony Towns get his 39 points. But if we end up winning, that's the bottom line. Mm -hmm.